Hi again. I'm going to talk about the book One, Two, Three, Four, which is a book about the Beatles written by Craig Brown. Now, he is um, a columnist for the Sunday Times and he specializes uh, in reviewing books, usually quite serious books. Um, and I found this um, book on the Beatles to be very, very witty. And uh, it's really got two main threads. Uh, there is a visit he made to Liverpool where he takes on the Beatles tour and visits um, all the well-known Beatles sites and the houses and so on. And uh, basically he observes some of the quirky uh, behaviour and uh, people uh, associated with that on the scene. He's quite funny. Now, um, he, he, he pokes fun uh, in a very gentle way because really he is a Beatles fan and he, he's not having a go at the Beatles, he's just having a go at the industry around, around them really. And then the other main strand of the book are um, stories, anecdotes, news items and so on. He, he's uh, put together in, in a, a, a really interesting way and um, lots of recollections and um, he has gathered material from lots and lots of sources to do this. So, um, and it also, it, it produces quite a lot of surprises. I've read a lot of the Beatles books and I found myself uh, f finding things I didn't know before and, and either to gasp at or to laugh at. There's a, an example, um, the actor Victor Spinetti, uh, who was in the movie um, Help with them. He, uh, he caught flu and was confined to bed. I'll, I'll read it out. The Beatles came to my hotel room to visit. The first to arrive was George Harrison. He knocked, came in and said, I've come to plump your pillows. Whenever anyone's ill in bed, they have to have their pillows plumped. He then plumped my pillows and left. John Lennon came in next and marched up and down, barking, Sieg Heil, Schweinhund. The doctors are here. They're coming to experiment upon you. Sieg Heil, Heil Hitler. And he left. Ringo then came in, sat down by the bed, picked up the hotel menu and read out loud as if to a child. Once upon a time, there were three bears, mummy bear, daddy bear, baby bear. And then he left. Paul opened the door an inch, asked, is it catching? Yes, I said, on which he shut the door and I never saw him again. Paul was being the pragmatist as usual. He knew that if he or the others had caught flu, there'd be no filming. So, the book has got some other quotes which are, I'll just, um, I'll just find, there's quite a bit about um, the Hamburg days at the beginning and so on, but, okay, so, one of the things I found really hilarious is he he um, has found uh, lots and lots of fan letters that were written to the Beatles during uh, the first and uh, subsequent tours of America. Dear Beatles, please call me on the telephone. My number is 6297834. If my mother answers, hang up. She is not much of a Beatles fan. With love from Maxime M. Cleveland, Ohio. And then, Dear Beatles, do you think that you could sing at our school dance on May 15th? The reason is nobody ever sang at our school dance except Marsha Goldman, who was in grade 10. Marsha sings okay, but she always forgets the words. Please say yes. Love, Joan G. St. Paul, Minnesota. Dearest John, I would like a lock of your hair, also a lock of hair from George, Paul and Ringo. You know you have plenty of hair, so you can spare one lock each for me, with love. Sylvia M, New York City. P.S. 
please write the name of the person on each lock so I will know who the lock of hair belongs to, as it is hard to tell when it is not on a person's head. So another quite amazing story that he um, unearthed, and, and he did this by, because he's a book reviewer and he's reviewed probably hundreds of books, including lots of, lots of autobiographies. Um, whenever people made a reference to the Beatles, he would uh, make a note of it. And the most amazing one was Malcolm Muggeridge. Now, some of you may remember um, Malcolm Muggeridge from the TV. He, he was kind of a, a pundit and a critic back in the day. Um, he he was, was very upper class and very artistic. And anyway, in about 1960, he was in Hamburg and he was wandering down the Reaper Barn when he goes into a basement uh, nightclub there and um, sees the Beatles. And he describes it in his, uh, in his diaries. And uh, it's, it's just such a, a bizarre thought that there's the Beatles uh, from Liverpool and this um, Malcolm Muggeridge has wandered in to see him. Um, another really interesting story, uh, which I will just pull up. Here. Okay, so a girl called um, Madeline Co. Um, okay, I've, I've got it. Madeline Co. was a young, very young girl, teenage girl, and she entered a competition in the TV show Ready Steady Go. And the prize was uh, a meal with uh, one of the Beatles. It was it turned out to be Paul, and she won. And she had a, a meal with Paul, and that was it. Uh, several years later, Paul is reading a newspaper article about a girl who left a note saying she's leaving home. And he, he wrote a song about it. She's leaving home on Sgt. Pepper. And um, um, Craig Brown has unearthed the entire story, and it turns out it's actually the same girl, Marilyn Cow. And uh, she, she left home, and her boyfriend was in the motor trade and all that. Um, and Paul didn't know, didn't know it was the same girl. And uh, so it was just some of the amazing coincidences and, and strokes of luck that happened in, in the Beatles story. Uh, another thing he mentioned was how much John resented um, the stones being uh, painted in the media as these um, rebellious youths who, who were dangerous and so on. When, um, and, and he said this to people, that um, while the uh, stones were in their posh schools sitting their A-levels, uh, the Beatles were in Hamburg surrounded by strippers and pimps and uh, drug dealers and gangsters uh, playing uh, eight hours a night. Um, and uh, yet the Stones had this kind of rebellious image. Uh, uh, another, another part of the book deals with the, the drug um, uh, raids that were conducted, not just on the Beatles, but all, all the uh, high profile um, pop stars at the time. And um, they were all led by the same guy, Detective Sergeant Norman Pilch. Even sometimes when it was outside of the Met area in, in Surrey and places like that. And he seemed to have uh, been his bonus about this. Anyway, um, subsequently, uh, Detective Sergeant Pilcher was uh, convicted of uh, corruption himself and uh, was sentenced to four years in prison. So he, he was um, quite a bad egg. So 
quite quite a bit of the book is devoted to Yoko and um, her career as such as it was before she met John and then her effect on the Beatles and um, she she always wanted to be some sort of avant-garde artist and um, at one time she um, she was in a sort of um, syndicate of, of people and in the book it says um, her first hus husband um, could play the piano but her own particular talents were less easy to pinpoint. She, she used to mess around with eggs and jelly and stuff and, and palm them up as paintings. Paula George resented her presence at the uh, recordings and uh, because not that she was there but she, she was um, making uh, suggestions and inputs and, and uh, acting as if she's part of the band. And what I think they should have done was each of them bring their own girlfriends down and get them to make suggestions and John would have exploded. And, and he would have said, no girlfriends, no wives, no girlfriends, and thrown them all out. I'm, I'm pretty sure, because he, he certainly would not have liked anyone outside of the Beatles making suggestions to him. But, as we know, he made his choice and, um, you know, he started making music um, with, with uh, Yoko Ono. Just as an aside, um, during uh, siege situations where they're trying to induce stress on the, the um, terrorists or the, the uh, bad guys inside, they, they play various sounds to them, um, rabbits being slaughtered and so on. But a favourite is the singing of Yoko Ono. To induce them to surrender. Um, my, my, my view on Yoko Ono is that Japanese society is so rigid and formalized that when anyone goes off the rails they go right off the rails out to where there's no more zip code left and um, I was actually um, thinking of a simile for how crazy uh, she is and, and then I realized she is the simile, crazy as Yoko Ono works. So I'm, I'm going to be using that one. Uh, so with a plethora of Beatles books, um, some bookshops have shelves just of books about the Beatles. It's difficult to, uh, to come up with anything that's truly original. And Craig Brown has done this. He's written a very original book. And it's uh, it's really a delightful read. Uh, it, it's very easy to read. He's got a great writing style, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you're a, a Beatles fan or a fan of um, music in in in, uh, in general, you'll enjoy the book.